Dear God, your presence graces the air, and soon everyone will see. Hi everyone, this is Alicia from the Fantasia Film Festival, and we are super excited to be presenting the Canadian release of the movie Saint Maud in collaboration with Elevation Pictures and Antrack Films. As a little sneak peek, here's our exclusive interview with the director, Rose Glass. Well, hello, Rose. Nice to talk to you today. Uh, very happy to have you uh, on Zoom for a little interview about your new your new film, which we are super excited to be uh, presenting to all of Canada starting this week. You wrote and directed this film. It's your first feature, correct? Yeah. Um, so can you just begin by uh, telling me more about the genesis of the project, how the story came about? I think it's an idea that I started coming up with just as I was finishing film school at the National Film and Television School in 2014. And then it took a few years sort of developing it and working on it in, in like my spare time before we got it properly in development with Film 4 and then, you know, we shot it in like 2018. The initial hook that I came up with that I that I thought might be interesting was was to do a film which was basically a two-hander between a voice in her, a woman and a voice in her head. And quite quickly that voice became God. And I think the initial plan had been to sort of for God to basically be a second character and you'd have his voice, hearing his voice talking to more throughout the whole film. Why quickly that starts to feel a bit sort of gimmicky and I think I just, as I sort of started to flesh out the character a bit more and like wonder about what else was going on in her life and, you know, why is it that the main relationship in her life is with this voice in her head and nobody else seems to know about it or do they? And it's, it's ended up kind of just tapping into a lot of stuff that I think I'm interested in and... Morvid Clark's uh, performance is so intense and sometimes very physical. How did you how did you pick her for the role? What did you see in her that really made you click? So she sent us a tape at first, um, and she just had this completely haunting sort of expression, and just one of those people that is just very you know magnetic, and you want to and you want to watch, and there's just it feels that she can do she can convey a huge amount with whilst doing you know, appearing to do very little, you know, just... Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and she's a real sort of chameleon, like her range is, is mad. Um, and yeah, we just had the best time working together. She's, her and Jennifer Wheely, who plays Amanda, her patient, they're both just really fun, chilled, and yeah, all the physical stuff's great. I'm <laughs> just like, get on the floor, ride the run. So the film is a very scary story about, you know, faith, uh, religion, being a savior kind of narrative. I don't know, I noticed a few nods to maybe The Exorcist or Stephen King-ish, like Carrie type uh, characters in there. What were your inspirations as a director? It's, it's really weird. Honestly, neither of those two films, but I, I'm always really embarrassed because <laughs> now, because after it was pointed out to me, like, oh, she, you know, the thing and the vomiting and the levitating, I was like, yeah. They weren't conscious, <laughs> not consciously. <laughs> It's, kind of, it's that horror if thing it, that you just have. If it reminds anybody of Carrie or The Exorcist, I'm obviously very uh, happy with that because they're, they're amazing films. But <laughs> for, for me, the stuff I was more I was thinking about a bit more consciously was the Repulsion, Rosemary's Baby, Through a Glass Darkly, The Silence, some sort of early Bergman films. Um, Chamber Piece kind of quite contained weird psychological dramas where, you know, pressure cooker kind of social situations between between people in these sort of confined spaces and. I think I told more of us to watch most of those. Actually, maybe her, yeah, I think I gave her a list of films to watch just so her and Jennifer kind of had a rough idea of the sort of tone that the film would be in, because I figured some of the stuff they have to do is a bit sort of silly and weird. I'm very excited for our, our, our festival audience, especially because they're so passionate and enthusiastic about uh, genre film in general, and I know they've been waiting for this one for a long time, so I'm excited mm -hmm. to see what the, the reception reaction will be from them. Uh, I hope they like it. <laughs> I'm sure they will like <laughs> I I liked it a lot. I, well, thank you so much for talking to me today. I really hope to meet you in person eventually at the festival. Me too. Hopefully one day. I would love to come sometime. Yeah, that's the annoying thing. It's like, oh, this is all once in a lifetime, but like, maybe I would have spent the last year like getting to visit cool places and do festivals. But... Anyway, <laughs> poor me, isn't that terrible? Um, uh, I'm optimistic <laughs> that it's going to happen. Festivals will be back. <laughs> yes, can't wait. Well, I hope the festival goes wonderfully and thanks for talking to me. Thank you. What if I'm getting it all wrong? <laughs>